All right, so good afternoon. Uh, thank you once again for joining us to this session where we're gonna discuss the uh, flexible grading policy. And um, before we begin, we're gonna go through the ground rules of this event. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, please mute your microphones while the panelists are presenting. We will give you the chance to unmute yourself or ask questions through the chat um, as we finish the, the presentations. The panelists will take questions, as I mentioned, towards the end of the presentation. Be respectful while communicating through the microphone and chat. If you would like to ask any question, please raise your hand and the moderator will call your name and ask you to mute your microphone and state your question. If you would like to ask a question and don't want to use a microphone, you could post your question in the chat after the presentation are completed. And then the moderator will ask the questions to the panelists on your behalf. Our moderator today is David Rose. He's gonna be checking with you in the chat and also collecting some of those questions and presenting it to the panelists. Please uh, keep in mind that all participants can see the text messages in the chat and we urge you not to share personal information in the chat. The moderator of the town hall will reserve the right to remove participants who will not abide by these rules. So to begin, um, this is the town hall agenda for today. We will establish the, the, ground, uh, the ground rules, which we just did. We will introduce the panelists next. We will begin to uh, talking about what credit and no credit auction is. We will uh, talk later about the implications related to financial aid for preclinical programs and how to actually opt in in CUNY first. And then after that, we will open the Q&A session. Our panelists, uh, among the panelists today, we have Kel Baksharet, uh, who's the director of the Financial, uh, Financial Aid Services Office, Phil Gimber, the uh, chair of the Health Ser uh, Science Department, Vanessa Gonzalez Figueroa, the director of the Student Advisement Services, Daniel Diaz, uh, director of the International Student Services, Matthew Ekoff, uh, director of the Accelerated Studies and Associate Program ASAP, Julian Salazar, the Director of the College Discovery, and Darwin Duncans, the Associate Director of the Office of the Registrar. Uh, we'll begin now by uh, talking and, uh, a little bit more about what credit no credit is, and the person in charge of that section is Vanessa Gonzalez, as I mentioned before, Director of the Student Advisement Services. Thank you, Ramon. Hi, everyone. Um, so top five for students. Number one, this is your choice um, to elect whether if you want to accept credit or no credit is your choice and you have to opt in. CUNY allows you 20 business days and for session two, the 20 days ends on March 25th. You could apply the credit or no credit to one, some, all or none. Um, so again, it's an optional item. Uh, the excluded courses are courses in the clinical phase of, uh, of, of health sciences. And so the listing of those courses are there. If you have any questions, it's best if you speak to an advisor and there's some things that you need to consider before you opt in. And that's the impact of your GPA, future admissions to health science programs and transferring to other colleges or graduate school. And then lastly, once you decide to convert your grade to credit or no credit, it's final. There's no changing. Uh, the timeline for uh, session two, uh, begin, the withdrawal period has passed. Grades are due uh, on Friday. So once you receive your grade, you can begin opting in on the 27th, which is Saturday. And then the deadline is March 25th. Again, 20 business days once uh, grades are submitted. Thank you, Vanessa. Now, um, the next section is covered by uh, Dr. Gail Bakshari, the director of the financial aid uh, office. Good afternoon. So federal finan uh, student aid refers to the Pell grant program, the work study program, student loans, and the supplemental educational opportunity grant program. So students who receive federal aid are required to successfully complete their courses and meet the minimum GPA requirements established by the college on the number of credits attempted. Under the CARES Act for spring 20, the courses uh, with NC and, and, and credit grades were excluded from the satisfactory academic progress calculation. And this has been extended to the fall term, which includes both session one and session two. 
Please note students who are not currently meeting the academic progress requirements with grades of W, WA, WD, or WU will need to submit a financial aid appeal and provide documentation that it was a direct result of COVID-19. Students can file an appeal now for spring 21 and the deadline is March 12th. Students must meet with their academic advisors to ensure to create the plan and to ensure that they will meet the standards by the end of the spring term. Next slide. On the state aid, uh, the state, New York State has not yet determined that students certified by the college for fall 20 will not suffer, suffer negative consequences regarding their current or future awards. So this decision is still pending by New York State and New York State aid refers to the tuition assistance program, which is TAP, the aid for part-time study program, the part-time scholarship program, and the Excelsior program. So all the state programs right now, the decision is still pending by New York State. Thank you, Gail. Uh, now covering the preclinic, uh, the implications for preclinical students, we have uh, Dr. Phil Gimber from the Natural Science Department. Hello, everybody. This is Phil Gimber. Hope you guys can hear me okay. Yes, we can. Great, great. So um, our biggest thing is if you are thinking about taking a credit or no credit, just be cautious. If you're getting a letter grade that's above a C, so if you're getting an A, a B, or a C, it would actually negatively affect you because if you take a credit grade, we count that as a C for your preclinical entry. If you take a no credit, you have to take the course again because we can't accept a no credit course to progress through clinical. So just keep that in mind. So our biggest advice, of course, is the first time you're taking your course, really try to do the best you can. Try to earn the highest grade that you can. Um, and again, of course, you, you already heard from financial services. Um, I'm just seeing if there's anything we missed. But again, just to repeat that again. So if you take a credit grade, no matter if you were earning an A, B, or a C in the class, you would get a C according to our preclinical guidelines. So just make sure you keep that in mind. All right. Th thank you, Phil. Thank you. Darwin um, is going to uh, cover now the how to op how to obtain section, uh, and he's from the registrar office. So, hello everyone. Um, so, uh, once you've gotten to this stage, um, you know the assumption is you you've already you know you've talked to your advisors, you've talked to um, student financial services, so you've worked out you know the different impacts that you know that opt-in may have. So, what I'm going to do is just to walk through real quick. Um, the, the actual mechanics of opting in. And, and it's, real, it's real simple. Um, you know, they've, they've tried to make it as intuitive as possible. Um, so, so the first thing you do is uh, you're gonna go to CUNY first. Um, the URL is listed there. Um, and most of you would already know this. And then you're gonna click on your student center, right? So when you bring up your student center on the left-hand side, as you see in the slide here uh, with the highlighted area, you're gonna see the option to click on view grades. All right, so you go ahead and you click on that. And next slide, please. All right, and then this screen is gonna come up, um, which, which is gonna show you the, the, the different grades that you earned in the class. So, so for one, your grades must be in, right? Your, your final grade must be in for the class. And then next to each eligible class, you will see a drop down um, where you will choose whether, you know, to, whether you're gonna opt in or not. Right, so you know, for instance, if you know, as 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 Dr. Gimber mentioned, if you have, you know, allied health uh, courses, right? If you're in the candidacy program and you have those kinds of courses, then those are not eligible, right? Um, so you go ahead, you select from the drop down, you select whether you're opting in or not, and then you click the submit button. It's going to prompt you to confirm. So you should, you know, you should make sure that whatever you're choosing, as as the, the choice is final. Right. Once you once you actually opt in, then it, it's it's a final choice, and then you just uh, confirm that you want to opt in, and you say okay, and you submit it. Um, next slide, please. 
So uh, you know you'll get you'll get the screen to review, right? And if you if you have you know if you have any questions, right? You can contact your advisor. If if you if CUNY first through any errors, meaning the system itself, if you if you got some kind of error saying you know maybe the transaction wasn't completed, or you know or it timed out or it logged out on you halfway through, then co co contact the registrar's office. The email is is registrar at lagcc.cuny.edu. And then we'll take a look at what happened and try to um, try to remedy the situation for you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Darwin. So we're gonna open now um, the Q&A uh, component of this section. In the meantime, I also have the contact information on the screen for all the different offices that we currently have here as part of the panelists and, and the support. So I'm gonna open it, open the floor for any questions if you have any. And just one thing I guess I could add in that I didn't say for students that are listening. Um, you wanna look at your, the way when you, when you choose these things, the credit and no credit, and you're thinking about applying for health sciences either now or or anything if you're thinking about going to law school one day or engineering or something one of those competitive types of majors you want to put yourself in the shoes of an admissions uh counselor and someone that's doing the admissions and think if i have many 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 no credit and credit grades what will that mean right so really think about it not only for now but for your future when you make these choices what's going to be best and Again, I always say really try to get the top grades you can versus using this option over too much. This should really be just something you use as an emergency. Th thank you, Phil. And if I could also add, Ramon, um, for, you know, for the students listening, uh, if, if, you, you know, if you've received an, an F for, for a class, then, then you know, I would advise don't even think about it. Just go, go ahead and, and, and take the no credit. Um, because the F, the F will have an impact on your GPA, right? While, while you know, true, true. The, while the no credit will not. So, so you know, if you receive an F, don't even think about it. Just go right ahead and 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 opt in for the NT grade in that case. Thank you, Darwin. Does um, we have any or questions that we can address? Okay, we don't have that many students uh, in the participants uh, um, as among the participants, but uh, this uh, recording will be shared with uh, all the students who are enrolled for session two. Uh, we will be providing the link and also in the website, which is in the link below here uh, or the, the current slide. But we also will be sharing the direct link for this recording to all the students enrolled for session two once this is over. So is there anything else that the panelists would like to add before I stop the recording? Ramon. Yes. Just to remind the F1 students that we accept the credit and non-credit to count the 12 credits that they need in order to keep the F1 status. So it's not a problem for them because in order to get the credit and non-credit, it has to be an eligible grade because Ws cannot be converted, so it's not a problem for the F1 students. Okay, thank you, Daniel. I just wanna share, because there, this question came up before, you cannot opt in for a course that has a W. So once you selected a withdrawal, then you cannot change that grade. Um, you could only opt in for letter grades that were given by the faculty a, well, not an A or A minus, but a B through D grade, and also an F. The F for no credit, and then anything below an A minus would be a credit. That's it. Thank you, Vanessa. All right. 
So I'm going to thank every, all the participants and all the students that attended this session. And as I mentioned before, we will be sharing this recording with all, all the current students enrolled for session two. So thank you, everybody. I'm going to stop the recording right now. Thank you.